Hello there, everyone, and welcome to another episode of <sighs> Hooked on You, a Dead by Daylight dating sim. I'm still playing it, or rather, playing it all. We're still uploading it. Anyways, uh, it's time for another episode of this. Enjoy watching me be emotionally tormented. Alright, so last time... We were jumping around a lot between different characters. <clears throat> and at the end of it, Dwight and Claudette were just like, Hey, you got the most points with the Wraith. You should probably just try and focus on them. Because that's the only way you're going to get anywhere. It's like, okay. And we still got the friendship ending, which I kind of expected. Because there was a friendship ending, a lover's ending, and a heartbreak ending for all four killers. And then I think there might be like little bonus things. I'm not sure. But, uh, I figure we're gonna keep going with the Wraith. Uh, we're gonna get... We're gonna go for the, um, the true love ending. And then we're gonna go for the heartbreak ending right afterwards. And any text or scenarios that we've already seen before, you know what we're gonna do? So hopefully we'll get a lot... I forgot about that. So hopefully we'll get a lot more done, uh, in this stream than we did last time, considering... Uh, um, what's the word I want to use? We're going to be skipping through everything we've already seen before. This is why I really want there to be a fast forward button. So I did it the manually fucking click every time. Jesus criminy Christ. I'm still trying to think of some kind of roast that I can do. If I, if I come up with anything that's remotely... I don't know. I don't know. Hi, Huntress. I'm not, see, I'm not in the moment able to like, I'm more reactionary with insults. Somebody will do something or say something and I will use that to just dig a hole in them. But I don't just like, bah, insult a person, just out of the blue. Like when Way of Troll does something stupid, you know, I can call him out on it. All right, there's a quiz. Uh, how attractive am I, am I? Not at all. Whoa, watch it, that's bullshit. You're beautiful, you hear me? No, I don't. No, I'm not game. You can't lie to me. You got have any superpower, what would it be? I'm just taking different answer speeds to see what the different options are. Let's say flight this time. Oh, yeah, flight for sure. Technically, I suppose I can fly. Honestly, it's not that it's cracked out to be. As far as I go, I'm still not where I want to be. What was your best subject in school? Uh, I think I said math last time, so history. Nice. It's important to know what came before so that we are not doomed to repeat humanity's mistakes. I mean, we will anyways. But still. What's your favorite animal? Uh, I said mustard last time, so let's say dog. You look absolutely adorable in a little puppy mask. Uh, no thank you. Favorite color? I said blood red. Let's say blue. Blue isn't good for productivity. It makes people want to be lazy. What's your dream job then, uh, astronaut? That'd be pretty basic to be an astronaut, I think. It's hard to imagine being farther away from anyone than floating in space. The cold, inky vastness of nothing. Forever. Best flavor of ice cream! I think we said vanilla last time, so chocolate. My favorite flavor is- oh yeah, they all say their flavor is pain. That's right. And here's- oh! Uh, I did find out if I tell the voice- I'm gonna say- oh, I can't say it here. We're gonna tell the voice the favorite is still chocolate. Because the voice wants me to say mint, and if I don't say mint, they say I'll have a bad time. You got a reading comprehension problem? I just told you, mint chip was where it's at. You almost bought yourself a game over there, buddy. That's right. I can end your life whenever I want to. I'm in control. So don't you forget it. If I say you like mint chip, you like mint chip. Now try it again. Tell me, what's the best flavor of ice cream? Chocolate. 
In case it wasn't clear who's in charge, it's me. You have to understand. It feels very good to end someone else's game. You should try it sometime. Hey, look, you get a good moment for telling the voice to fuck off with its ice cream. And that gets me an achievement. Somehow. I thought I had that one already. That's... Steam, what the fuck? Did I not get that one already? Hey, Steam, could I please sort them by, you know, when I got them, you stupid fucking thing? Oh, I guess they would all be the... Yeah. Maybe not. I guess it's like... Oh, I guess that's an achievement for, like, New Game Plus or some shit. It's like, hey, you started a second file. Here we go. Yay, Xantox first did he send. Yeah, Eva, you missed the first one. Uh, you missed the first stream last week. I guess you could watch it, or maybe you did. I don't fucking know. Uh, we're gonna try and beat the game, though. Can't wait for the next one? Oh, buddy. Uh-uh. There, there ain't gonna be one. By the way, they wanna know how attractive I am? You know what? For the second round of questions, I'm gonna make Ebit answer. Ebit, how attractive would you say I am? Very? That's a lie, but I'll take it. That's what you think very attractive is? Compared to this? What if we made a Station of Hope dating sim? I mean, isn't that basically what school mode is? Chat reflexes, his, chat reflexes and his muscles are so tight you can practically see the blood running through his veins. Alright, if- alright, Eva, next question. If I could have any superpower, what would it be? Correct answer, invisibility. Alright, Eva is getting those relationship points. All right, now, Eva, next question. What was my best subject in school? It's no longer faces of Eva, it's faces of Xantok, and Eva just lost relationship points by saying, skipping class, I would never! You can see I majored in skipping class. If I had ever gone to school, I'm sure I would have done great in skipping class. I prefer skipping or walking almost always. Of course you do. You also hum while you do it. Alright, now Eva, what is my favorite animal? What is a mustelid? Hey, I googled it to find out last time. You say dog? I'll accept dog, but the correct answer is lion. Hey, Alright, now, but yeah, next question. What is my favorite color? Yes, for real, lion was the correct answer. I like lions. Are you are you laughing at me? Do you want to lose more relationship points, Eva? Three old. Th do you do you think my favorite color? It, okay, okay, better, better. You actually know this one. Good for you. The correct answer is red. But three day old course is a funny answer. But we're saying blood red. All right, Eva, next question. What is my dream job? You'd say we're friends? Mm, well, really, really, that's kind of up to me, isn't it? I mean, you thought my favorite subject in school was skipping class. You do know, though, that my favorite, that my dream job is not working at all. Now then, Ebit, 
Final question. What is my favorite flavor of ice cream? I'll give you a hint. I answered this question when we did that poll and one of the questions was, what's your favorite ice cream flavor? But I don't think I ever told people what my actual answer was. You don't know this about me. Mm. This is fun. I'm enjoying this. We should get Chato to do this next. Make him try to figure it out. You think the answer is chocolate? Well, of these three choices between vanilla, chocolate, and horse flesh, honestly, I would accept either vanilla or chocolate, just not the horse flesh. The correct answer, however, is rainbow sherbet, or cookies and cream, or the cookie dough. The, the, they're fun flavors, you know? But between both vanilla and chocolate, I mean, they're both kind of just kind of like, they're about the same. They ain't the favorite, but I'll take it. All right, and all of them, their favorite flavor is pain, which is terrifying. Terrifying. Oh, you're the, you are the other rainbow sherbet. Oh shit. All right, that gets bonus relationship points to EBIT. All right. Okay. Uh, the narrator, however, says mint chip, and they tell me that if I don't change my answer to mint chip, then they're gonna kill me. Which just happened. We just uh, saw that happen. So yeah, the best flavor is mint chip. According to the narrator. All right, so we got our four characters here. We got Trapper the Jock. We got Rafe the uh, the nerd. Spirits the Goth girl. And Huntress is the, um, the sporty girl? No, not the sporty girl, the, um, the preppier girl, I guess. But we're just skipping through all the dialogue that we've already seen before so that we can do, um, so we can just get into trying to date the Wraith again and we want to try and see his best ending. Because that's what we're trying to do. We've already seen, like, the basic shit. We're just going for new shit and going for endings now. So yeah, let's go for a dip in the pool, because that was the Rafe's suggestion. Whoa, the pool? You you actually want to go to the pool? I, uh, well, I mean, uh, <laughs> sure. Why not? I've got good ideas. What's wrong with my ideas? The pool is great. Everyone knows that. All over the world, if people agree on one thing, it's that pools are great. Look, we've got a whole ocean right here. And they still put in a pool, because pools are just, you know... Great. It's a real special treat. And you thought it was bad when he stayed quiet. Um, hold on. Oh yeah, that's where they tell me that I can't do what I want yet. Uh, you wanna do, you wanna run person-specific trivia? Like, answer this question the way this person would. I mean, there are trivia games like that, so. So yeah, Dwight and Claudette, they're the activity coordinators. They don't like it when I go and do all, do things that they didn't approve. Uh, we're here on Murderer's Island, for anybody that wasn't aware of that. There's a second island, it's called IP Island. Uh, it's where all the characters that are, uh, from, um... That aren't original Dead by Daylight, they all go hang out there. So, you know, Leatherface. Freddy Krueger. They all have fun on their own island. Anyways, we're actually gonna go to the pool, like the race sex. We want to build our points with the race, so that he will actually fall in love with us this time. Wraith moves ahead to the pool at a pace that could almost be considered jaunty. If a creature so lengthy they appeared to be made entirely of elbows and ankles could jaunt. Uh, what's going on with Wraith's face? That smile? Is that what a smile looks like when he does it? What can I say? Being enveloped by water is comforting. It's quiet, it's ominous, and you know. Wraith looks back over each shoulder to make sure no one besides you is within earshot. The fire can't get me. Super normal stuff here, as usual. Oh, great. With Claudette and Dwight. What do these two want? Uh, since everyone's at the pool, we figured we'd bring over some of our most popular pool accessories. Xantok, uh, which is this particularly interesting to you? Uh... Well, not the goggle and the snorkel, because I drown. Basketball hoop? I don't think so. Inflatable lounger? Mm -hmm. Foam noodles? I like the foam noodles, honestly. That would be my choice. I don't know what Wraith is going to like. 
Well, I'm gonna go, but I think I feel like I know enough of his correct answer that we should be able to get the good ending with him this time. And if we don't, well, run number three. Let's go film noodles. I'll take a film pool noodle, please. Ah, film pool noodles. Who's in love combining wetness and blinding pain? All the fun of a whip with a bonus smell of industrial solvent. Trapper gives a pool noodle in his hands, tightly wringing it, it tightly wringing its would-be noodle neck until cute little squeak sounds. My favorite. Maybe you're not as dumb as you look. You frolic with each other, trying to give each other welts. Not fun for you. Wait a minute. The water near your leg just got warm. Oh, come on! Trapper, did you just pee in the pool? It's important to establish dominance when you enter a new place. Dude, you are you are already the worst out of the four. Now you're like even worse. No, I'm calling him out. That's disgusting. You're a disgusting monster. Flattery will get you everywhere. You know it's unhealthy to hold it in. For a waking nightmare, you can almost believe that you're starting to relax a bit and forget about how much you can't remember. It's that the sun's very rays have a calming effect on you. Your body tranquilized with a soft light from overhead, coupled with the cool breeze rolling into the sea. And you're not alone. Oh, I feel recharged with the gentle warmth of the ocean's caress. If it was a little too warm, that might have been my fault. Also, this is the pool, not the ocean. Okay, everyone, just let him finish. Thanks, Sand Dog. I know this probably doesn't seem like much, but... But anyone want to play a game of Marco Polo? Yes, I love games. I'll go first. Someone blindfold me. Of course, Trapper has a blindfold ready to go. It's as if he had it in his hands before you even spoke. And he probably pulled it out of his pants, because he seems like that kind of freak. Did he just wink? And did you spot your lip? Good thing you're getting reined in, because it sure seemed like you were about to act up. Metagame consists of two parts. On top of a point at which rotates in a clockwise direction. On the bottom of a target you're going to be pointing at. We already know how this works. So let's just go for it. It's time to feel around. Go get him, Tiger. Jesus Christ. All right, I actually got to click it here. Hey, Wraith. God, the mini games actually suck, though. Like these are not good mini games. Ooh, not quite. Ooh, very off. That was pretty good. No, it wasn't. Don't lie. Just ignore him. You've just been thrown into a very weird situation, and uh, you held your own. I respect that. That was a good game. I say we celebrate. By throwing this waiter whose name I forgot into the pool! Yeah, I'll have some fun. I'll push Dwight into the pool. Hilar oh, hilarious! Bullying truly is the gift that keeps on giving. You grab Dwight's legs and help Trapper give him the heave-ho. You know what? Sorry, I can't pretend to support you on this one. Only Trapper is this sadistic. I know it's all good fun or whatever, but not on my Murderer's Island. Yeah, that's right. This place really is called Murderer's Island. That doesn't mean we're cool with bullying. You're on thin ice, friend. I'm no expert. Even though as an omnipotent narrator, I probably should be. But I think that means it's time for the next activity. Man, I could have had Curb on here voicing the narrator again. All right, it's too bad he's not available. Seems like the next activity is... Mealtime? Not quite. All right, so yeah, it's mealtime. We've seen this before. Oh yeah, the trickster is here too. He just likes to pop in and out whenever he wants to. He's not a date option. Uh, I think there might... He teased the secret trickster ending last stream. I don't know if it's true, but he teased it. So maybe? We're just going to focus on the endings I know about first, and we'll see if there's any missing achievements. Because yeah, we're going for all achievements in this game. Fuck it. Why not? Alright, minigame time! Let's go! 
What are we mini-gaming this one? Oh yeah, we're slicing the meat. Ooh, not quite. There we go. Hey. Is there one more? Oh, no. Spirit like that. Now yeah, we got the ocean talking to us. The spirit doesn't eat because she's the only one of these characters that's actually dead. Uh, what do I want to tell them? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's gross. Actually, it's not the food or the company. I'm just super self-conscious how I look when I eat. I was just pretending to be grossed out by dinner, so I have an excuse not to chew in front of everyone. Sorry that made things awkward. I'm actually extremely hungry. Yeah, watching people eat is gross. But try to relax and not worry what everyone thinks. Oh, sorry, uh, also Spirit thinks watching people eat is gross. I don't think they're ever going to watch one of your streams where you eat. It's so important to always remember people are watching you. Judging you. Definitely not ignoring you. Right guys, is anyone listening to me? Typically a group that includes one if not more cannibal staring at you with meat juice dripping from the chins would be quite terrifying. Scary even. Downright frightening. However, right now you're barely able to keep your head up. Let alone get scared and run away. I'm an iterator, not a physician. So please don't take this as a medical advice. But I'm pretty sure you need to eat to stay alive. Oh, hello, Ocean. Ocean's stalking again. I'm pretty sure none of that text is new. And it's like, hey, why are we here? I don't know. Why are we here? We woke up! And the Wraith is looking at us. You weren't grossed out, were you? Even when you eat, you know. You look like a beautiful angel. You just pretend to be awkward because it's lonely being so perfect. All we have in this life are those fleeting connections with other living things. Something to remind us we're not alone. Could you possibly be as shy and nervous as someone like me? Uh... Yeah. I swear. Great not the not of someone who just realized that I'm a liar. Ah, that's not true! I am definitely not a outgoing person. Alright, well now he's gonna monologue. About Odyssey. Like, listen, you don't know me! He showed me his bell again, though. Uh, I'll hold it delicately. Yeah, 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 Dwight Claudette, I gotcha. Alright, around the fire, what are we doing? Evening activities, spooky, scary story time. We're gonna do Wraith Story. I'm not really one for scary stories. Life is scary enough as it is. You literally carry on a skull and spine as your little prop. As the other kids laugh, Wraith holds up his skull and gazes into its hollow, dark eye sockets. If you're looking for something Shakespearean in this story, look elsewhere. This is a tale of madness, of staring at the soul of death, and never returning. Once upon a time, a young man worked at a junkyard. The man was quiet, kept to himself, just wanted to avoid trouble. While the boss dealt with clients, the young man operated the crusher, turning old cars into cubes of twisted metal. One night, right before crushing a car, he noticed something. Blood. Drip. Drip. Dripping from the trunk. He opened it and found a frightened stranger bound and gagged. The young man reeled. Was he about to actually murder the stranger? How could this have happened? He freed the stranger who ran off into the waiting arms of the boss, the owner of the junkyard. Before a shaken employee could tell him about the mistake they had nearly made, the boss had took out a knife and swiftly slit the stranger's throat. The young man fell to his knees, unable to comprehend what was happening. As he stared at the ground, too shocked to cry, the boss approached him. What did you do? He asked the boss. 
I did your job for you. What do you mean? That's not my job. My job was to crush the cars. The boss let out a miserable scoff. His face contorted in evil disdain for the pathetic wretch in front of him. Why do you think we're crushing these cars? To save space? Who do you think my clients are? I, I, I don't know, mumbled the young man. Yes, you do, screamed the boss. Deep down, you've always known what is happening here. You just didn't want to admit it to yourself. Your hands aren't clean. My clients give me money, and I take care of their problems, eliminate their witnesses, tie up their loose ends, or actually, you do. No, the young man whimpers, the boss towered above him. Yes, you're nothing more than an executioner, and you've reaped hundreds of souls. The young, man's, the young man's body shook with soft spasms as he tried to stop crying. It was when the boss started laughing that it happened. Something in the young man changed. He stood up, now taller than the boss. A faint glimmer of fear overtook the snarl on the older man's face. The young man's face was empty. Empty as he grabbed the boss's throat and dragged him to the car in the crusher. Empty as he picked up the boss and stuffed him inside. Empty as he slammed the trunk down on him, its stupid fat head sticking out, begging for mercy. Empty as he started the machine, staring at the boss and its sniveling, crying wet face. Empty, as he grabbed the boss's head, dug his fingers in, farther, piercing the skin. Empty, as he squeezed and pulled. Empty, as he heard bones popping and snapping. But when the boss's head, still attached to his spine, pulled cleanly out of his disgusting sack of a body, he smiled. Ray stares back into the eye sockets of his skull. It doesn't matter how good you are, how innocent, how kind, how full of love you once were. When you look into the eyes of evil, you will surely go mad. An awkward silence fell upon the room. Until. Uh, let's ask about the story. That poor young man. I wonder what happened to him. Oh, y yeah. Um, we may never know. It totally wasn't me. Well, wherever he is, I hope he's okay. I can't tell, but I think Rafe just smiled. Sorry, it's just weird to see him do it. Yeah. On that note, everyone decides it's time to take a break and split up for a little bit so that they can all have a moment alone before bed. Everyone leaves and you're alone by the fire. The only thing you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore. How nice. Alright, and here's the trickster being a being a tricky bitch. And then he's gone, and Wraith is approaching me. Uh, hey, I'm probably not making a great impression because, um... Well, that's not really my thing. I just know that if you got the enemy, I mean, look at the others. They aren't around. And they really hate the fire pit. I just kind of hate fire in general. Maybe we could go back to the pool? And like, I don't know, whatever, you know? I dip in the pool with the wraith. You've come a long way in a single day. I'm not saying you shouldn't follow him. I mean, an offer like that. Just don't forget our little talk. You and your storyteller friend slip into the water. It's just the right temperature for an evening dip. Plus, if some jealous shark comes along and manages to jump from the ocean into the pool, you're also pretty sure your killer companion can handle it. 
Um, hey, do you... Do you remember my story? Oh, yeah, the one you just told, like, a minute ago? Yeah... Oh, yeah, I remember. Did you... I mean, like, what did you think of the young man in the story? Do you think he's weird? Uh, I would forgive him. I'd forgive him. What happened to him would make anyone snap. And who knows what happened in his past to lead him to that point. He was just trying to be good. Yes. That's all he wanted. Was to be good. Well, that makes sense. Um, does the young man remind you of anyone? Uh, yeah. That I did. It's you. It's clearly you. Wh what? No, no, it's, uh, I'm... I'm... You're carrying around the guy's skull and spying with you right now. Wraith looks at Azarov's skull. Then out into the middle distance. A long silence ensues. You notice the temperature has dropped significantly. Is it cold in this water now, or is it just me? Ugh. Look, my toes are turning to ice cubes. Wraith seizes up and squeezes his eyes shut. Please, I can't be in any cube talk. Not since, well, I heard that story from somebody else. A long, 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 very long time ago from somebody else. The story you just told us two minutes ago. Exactly. The one that wasn't about me. Um, usually we'd be nervous that we were about to make things awkward when we barge in. But obviously we couldn't hold a candle to whatever was happening here today. Either way, it's time for bed. For you, not for us. After you sleep, that's when we party. Alright. So, we sleep- we don't have a tent. Everybody else has like a cabin or some shit, so we just sleep here at the fire. But they gave us a radio! So whatever we land on is what we're going to listen to for a little bit. Let's do 90. Or 88, I guess. I feel like I did this one last time. And it was just... I mean, we'll wait a minute. Yeah, we definitely heard this. But I don't... I thought I heard this one on a different station last time. Curious. I'm gonna give it a minute, see if it does anything. I don't think it's going to do anything else, so let's turn it off and move on with the game. Alright, let's get the Wraith back out here. Uh, Wraith, are you around? Just wondering if I could get a little company. I gotta build up my relationship points with you. I, I can't sleep. Oh, that happens to me a lot. Okay, don't laugh. I promise. Uh, okay, I promise. I guess my secret to falling asleep is... Listening to the sounds of bells or chimes. The liquid is white noise. To drown out anything you might be hearing that's keeping you up. Like what, right? Like those distant screams we can all hear coming from beyond the mountain? If that's a bit morbid, I guess you could own this chess piece of mine. Oh. It's the horse. It's a knight. They're brave, like I wish I were. And the horsey is cute. Ah, this is how we find out for the ladies' questions later on what his favorite chess piece is. You finally start to feel sleepy. Except, maybe this isn't really a sleepy feeling. Maybe you're paralyzed. You try to keep your eyes open. But you can't. Darkness overtakes you. 
The dark voice from earlier speaks to you again. It shouldn't still be as spooky. By now, you've had a whole day of strange voices in your head, but this one is still undeniably odd. Ah, uh, sleep paralysis demons. Oh, hi, spirit. I wasn't expecting you to be right next to me when I woke up. Curious. Hello. What book are you reading? Oh, hey, what? Shush. Clearly, she has noticed you're awake. But she hasn't actually looked at you. Seems like she's pretty focused on that book. Seems like forever she stares at the page before finally shutting the book and setting it down. Oh, you're awake. Yeah, I... Never mind. I saw you at the Wraith right before bedtime. I wouldn't tell you how to live your life. But if you ask me, you could do a lot better. It's completely by accident I even saw them over here. It's not like I was looking out for you or anything. That was simply the best reading light, and the text in my book is very, very fine print. So it's tough to read in the dark. Don't get the wrong idea. You and I are obviously mind our own business types. You right. Not phony, look out for each other as an excuse for just being nosy types. But, well, since you're here and I'm here, maybe we've got other things in common. Who knows? If we spend a little more time together tomorrow, we might find that, I don't know, we get along. And by get along, I mean, exist simply and comfortably without feeling any burning desire to assassinate the other person. Or not. Whatever. I don't care. Bye. Good night and sweet dreams to you, I guess? I don't know. Finally alone and for real this time you maybe drift out to sleep again. Hopefully you're not poisoned. Alright, insert roosters here. Because, oh, well, yeah, there's confessionals. I forgot about this. I think today went rather well. These were some of my first interactions with someone who was into para. They didn't end up in bloodshed or untimely perishing in my Russian cottage. So I'm counting today as a win no matter what happens. What do you think of the newcomer? Hmm, do I have to say? Oh, I do? Oh, shit. Oh, uh, okay. Hmm, attractive. Mysterious. I really don't know that many other words since I was raised by my mom in the woods until she was cured by an elk and I had to wash her intros off my seraphon. That being said, the other three should make sure to be on their guard. I don't know this new girl would have spent time with tomorrow, but I for one not let my guard down easily. Who knows about the others? Wraith. I think he knows more about than he's letting on about this place. He's a hard nut to crack. Meanwhile, Spirit is just screaming all the time. Major Buzzkill. Trapper, oof, where do I even begin with Trapper? He's buff, sure, but the daddy issues much? Sheesh. Look, I don't need anyone. I've been perfectly fine on my own since my mother died. I ate a fine diet of raw deer, bear, and human. And I'm fit as a fiddle. That being said, something about this new car makes me think that I might be missing out on some huge part of this thing called life. Alright, I thought maybe there's going to be different dialogue in this, because I made different choices, but I guess there hasn't been? Actually, that might have been slightly different dialogue there. Uh, I'm not really sure. Actually, I think she had different dialogue, but I think everybody else might have been the same. You open your eyes. The sun is shining. We find a cloud in the sky. And we've seen all this before. Hello, Trickster. Thank you for the awful drink. I am... Do I drink it? I don't think I drink that. I don't get smart to drink that. I'm going to save the game in case you give me the chance to drink that and it leads me to an extra game over. Uh, y yes, I'm not suspicious that there's no no option. Uh, would you sign this non-disparagement agreement? No. 
Oh, we're not so- oh, right, that's right, you can't- you get trapped, I forgot about that. It's been a week, I forget things. Alright, we got breakfast! Uh, I'm trying to quickly scan to see if some people might have different dialogue. Uh... I don't want to just, like, read the whole thing every time, that's gonna be so boring. Alright, I'm heading to the hot tub by myself now. Wait, something caught my attention. I'm addressing the narrator. What? It's crazy! Oh, right. Dwight and Claudette are fucking. Awkward. Strange. Alright, so now we gotta pick a date. No, trickster, go away. Oh, god damn. I skipped text too much. That's gonna be a problem. But Ritz was like legitimately asking us out. And then Huntress uh, wants to go to the beach house. She's got Russian moves for us. Wow, there actually is different dialogue this time around. Shit. Actually, no, wait, no, I think that isn't new dialogue, now that I think about it. Uh, are all we up to the Wraith on the Huntress? We're gonna go to, on a date with the Wraith again. We did this one last time. So then we should just be able to skip all the dialogue this time, I think. I'm gonna try to look cute. Maybe that was what I should have done. Uh, what brings me here? Uh, I have no idea. Honestly. There's also this. Oh, that's right, that's right, the potions. Uh, let's mix them. He's supposed to start mixing them. Hurts will probably like a science lesson, right? You need to make sure you start to smoke as race eyes go wild. The glass explodes, taking out the other bottles on a domino effect of highly poisonous liquid and tiny sharp shrapnel. Break the runs in front of you and shield you from the explosion. Wow. You certainly know how to, uh, make sparks fly. Break the double entendre. Kinda lame, but I'll take it. Wraith nervously smiles. He's endearingly awkward. So, uh, I guess. But tell him about your family. I remember my grandmother. He likes his grandmother, so we'll talk about that. Uh, sure is a beautiful night. Hoping it might turn into something a little more hands on. You lay back and look at the stars. Right, George, you start soliloquizing about the constellations. I can see well in the dark, so I'm pretty good at picking stars out. How about you? You can take me on in Constellation Trivia? Oh, can I? Feeling invigorated by the slightly flirtatious challenge, you smirk playfully at Wraith. I've learned a lot laying on my back. Look at the sky, that is. Okay then, let's see how many of these questions you get right. Deal. Alright, question first. This is Okay, Sea Whale. We already know that one. It is Cetus. We did this before. Uh, what do we call the ones in the ecliptic? That is the Zodiac. Uh, the one described as the of Luck is Horologium! Hell yeah. We got another nerd on the island. That was fun. Thank you. Truth or dare? That's right. Wraith doesn't want to do this. Uh, let's do dare this time. I dare you to tell if you were plant, what kind of plant you would be. Great question. Ray smiles, because we're a kiss ass. I'm gonna say we know okay yeah, he is a cactus, so I'm gonna say cactus as well. Uh I dare him to take off your shirt. Stop if you've heard this one before, but rape size. Oh right, he doesn't want to take it off. Okay, so that's bad. Oh, the reason is because I'm adorable. Oh, that's 
Not bad. Wraith looks at you inscrutably, with the computer chip running him shut off. Is he about to kill you? And then, other side. But this time he follows it up with a smile. Oh, alright. Ladies and gentlemen, a properly placed text box! Enjoy it while you can. Feels like a big moment, like you won the game or something. But, sorry, you got more to do. Alright, so once we'll it shows something with the bell, it's gone, it's gone missing. We'll have to find it later. Dramatic moment, because Spirit is going to try and steal us away from him. And we have to tell her to fuck off. You're a hypocrite. And now we go down the hatch. Into the secret sacrificial chamber. Yay, sacrificial chambers. It's what we all like. It's our favorite place to go at a place called Murder Island. Uh, and now it's dinner time. So we did the date. Yay. Skip through all that a lot faster than we did the first time around. So that's good. Clearly, I need to do a little more to be a part of this group. Or I'll be alone forever. However, I don't eat, and I like being alone. So I take that all back. I don't care what the group has for dinner, as long as we start with shrimp cocktail. I saw a movie once where these ghosts turned shrimp cocktail into a haunted synchronized dance, and I'm still working out how they did it. Uh, you mean beetle? Zantok, stop them from saying it. Uh, beetle shrimp? The most rare and delicious type of shrimp? Beetle shrimp? This is some new species. Because I've hunted many beetle and many shrimp. I've never heard of beetle shrimp. Oh, of course you haven't. Expert says they've got hypnotic powers. Everyone who sees them soon forgets. Also, something to do with dancing. I wasn't going to say anything that dumb. No, I was going to say. Oh, excuse you, Zantok. Now, you were saying, Trapper. You've done all you can. I appreciate it, but I'm just gonna have to narrate us out of this somehow. Hold on. Are we afraid we might actually recite some spell and conjure a ghost? Because I hate to break it to you, but it's a bit late for that. And then a giant osprey swooped down and dropped a severe head on the table, dissenting everyone! Trapper! Hey, I've never seen this particular separate head before! What? What's the wrong being honest? Not my finest work, but something had to be done. We gotta be careful about which cultural references we get mixed up with, is all. Alright, so now we gotta talk about our day. Uh, I had a great time. We don't want to talk about the hatch and spoil it. Brave smiles, good. Bony appetite, because the food has bones in it, including the veggies. The doll, they all, it has, all has bones. Uh, let's thank the servants. We pushed them in the pool earlier. But we can thank them now. Alright, it's story time again. Wraith, tell me a no Oh god, they want me to tell a story. That's right. Uh, Jesus. Uh, fine. I'll tell a story. Uh, it's gonna be... Adventure. Oh, I did that one already? Shit, I did that one last time. So what kind of story am I going to tell? Let's tell a romance story this time. I love good romance. The soft, gentle kind that you can bring your kids to without worrying that you're going to really screw them up. Boo. In case you were confused, that was not like a I'm a ghost boo, just a you suck boo. There was a newly elected prime minister in England. He was single, which was quite strange for the leader of his stature. Over the first few months of his tenure, he started to fall for one of his assistants. A girl from the wrong side of the tracks. She was no different from other girls. Brash and... Oh, so different, rather. Brash and adorable with a hint of vulnerability. After the President of the United States made a move on her during one of his visits, he had her sent away. I'm sorry, did you steal this from a popular Christmas movie? You watch Christmas movies? Obviously! They're the only thing on TV in December. I have all the streaming subscriptions, but I really still love flipping through channels. 
I want to know what happens to the Prime Minister. Do they end up together and start a family? If this doesn't end in revenge, I'm leaving. When do people get tortured in a warehouse? Not that kind of movie, Trickster. Oh. That didn't go well. Never played Jurassic Masterpiece. I don't know what movie they were talking about. Alright, Wraith, give me another story. Well, um, I, I guess, if you want. Let's see. What story could I tell? I could tell you what about Mami Wada, a beautiful African sea goddess who would lure men in with sex and then reveal her true form as half woman, half fish, making them swear to be true to her and no one else. Long story short, it usually ended badly for the men. Which is the end of the story, I guess. My bad. Hmm. Let's see. Just that what about the mysterious cult that would demand a human sacrifice to, um... No, that's not good. You don't want to hear that one. There's a living tree. Uh, its branches were more like tentacles, and it oozed a strange liquid from its bark. One time, a girl I knew drank the liquid. She disappeared that night. But a week later, a new tree appeared. It had a very familiar looking face etched into the bark. No, that's a bad story. That could never happen. Hmm. What about something truly horrifying? One time, I was doing my maps, and I mixed up the quadratic equation and Pythagorean theorem. Just for a second, in my mind, I guess I was tired, but now, that was really scary. I want to hear more about the half fish lady, particularly the fish part. It's not just you, Zantok. I have a time I have no clue what the hell Zant Trapper is talking about either. When you're hot and rich and extremely scary, you start to think people just accept whatever you say. Well, uh, that was story time. So moving on. Uh, when do I get to delete? Uh, do I not do it until... No, I do it tonight. I need to get rid of somebody. Which killer were you picking? This reaction you just... Oh. Oh no, wait. Shit. Is this the... Oh god, is this the excluding part? Or did I... Or is this something else I just forgot? I don't remember... But I can't, I can't pick Wraith because if this is actually the exclude, I don't, I don't remember. Spirit? Oh, you picked me. Yay. Sorry, that was rude of me. I despise phoniness. So I should be honest with you. Ah, so yeah, this wasn't the excluding thing. Shit, I fucked up. You make for interesting company. And I love the idea of winning over these other killers at all costs. Even I hate the game and the prize. But I had a long day. Floating, subverting expectations, grinding my teeth as I imagine sweet, sweet revenge. It takes a lot out of me. So don't step bring your A game, alright? It might seem like I hate everything. And getting to really know who I am is an impossible task. Now we're trying, but too bad. You won't know as you search deep inside yourself and bring everything you've got. Or just say the exact right thing at the right time and melt my cold heart in an instant. I don't know the rules here any better than you do. Also, I remember, I'm really in something. I didn't have to do a spinning game to get to go on the date with, um, uh, Rafe this time around. That's really weird. Huh. What the fuck is going on? Honestly, I don't know. I this it's Murder Island. I'm dating killers. And we got a friendship ending last time. I'm trying to get more than a friendship ending this time. But I've already screwed up because I've been skipping dialogue when it's been the same dialogue. But I forgot what the choices that I was about to make, and I thought maybe it was the one where I kicked somebody out, and it wasn't. So now I'm talking to the wrong killer. Oops. See you at the bar, I guess. Are you gonna date a fucking dead person? Uh, you know... I might. 
There's only one dead person on this island, it is, and that is Spirit. But uh, that's not who we're trying to get in this current run. I just fuck up and I picked the wrong person because I forgot the choice we were doing next. We were at the bar to find Dwight and Clyde at both wanting cocktail shakers, surrounded by a bevy of bottles for assorted boozes. Oh, uh, who's ready to get wasted? Well, I don't drink, so not me. Oh, you really don't drink? Ever? Is that a, like, because it will just fall out a hole in your stomach thing, or? I don't drink alcohol, because alcohol is poison of the body and the mind. And I don't need to act like a fool to have a good time thing. Then why did you choose the mixology lesson as your romantic nighttime activity? Um, everyone else is kind of dangerous and excuse to get loaded up on booze and make terrible decisions. It's true, not a single person has never even learned anything about one of these. Dwight? No, that's not true. You learned how to tie a cherry on a stem using only your tongue. Whoa, 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 whoa hey, hey! Who are the sort of the splash of my private business? Get that stuff, me. Well, I know what I'm drinking to forget tonight. Mixology is a real thing. It doesn't require alcohol to be interesting. I'll have you all know that I worked at a restaurant before I was violently executed. By your father. Or whom you will have your bloody revenge. Right? Right. So, yeah, let's just move on. How about you, Xantok? Do you drink? Uh, no, I don't. Never had an interest. I have the impression that tonight will be a night I want to remember perfectly. So I'm going to pass on the alcoholic drinks. Here, here. Alcohol is a false escape. Besides, it's not like the sober people can't have fun. You watch, a spear picks up a plump cherry and roughly stabs a little plastic sword through it. Cherry juice splatters everyone. Its little fruity guts flop out onto Spirit's lap. Oopsie. One well, of the upsides of wearing black. It hardly shows stains. No date backsies. So, um... Lovers, uh, what drink shall we make? Uh, zombie? Cause she's dead? Well, zombie sounds pretty fun, right? It's that, some kind of sick joke. Uh, th no. Sorry, uh, you didn't think I meant you. D did I? I, I would never. It's not an undead insult. It's some kind of kooky retro cocktail. Uh, uh t fuck. There's a bunch of ingredients and a signature look. I thought we could make one. And the best part, there's served out of an empty skull. You see Claudette's eyes go wide as she makes cut it out, dummy. And signals to Dwight. Uh, an empty skull shape? Glass! Not a literal skull. We don't have any of those on hand to pour drinks in. And if we did, yuck. Am I right? Okay, you got my attention. So what's in one of these? You do actually know, right? And you promise it's a good drink? It's definitely not a joke about my semi-undead state. Ah, ha, 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 yeah, of course. I know. Think about it, yeah, Bloody Mary may not have been a bad choice for Spirit. Um, I, I, I would believe that. Don't worry, we've got plenty of ingredients at our disposal, so why don't you show us? Wait, you're gonna do it live? Oh gosh, she's gonna be so impressed by your mixology knowledge. You got this! Alright, so we're going non-alcoholic. So first we'll start with the substitute for the... Oh no. I don't know anything about alcoholic drinks. I've never had one. I don't know what goes in a zombie. So this is all just gonna be a mess. I'm gonna say rum. Well, I've got rum extracts, and it can be mixed with a little apple juice. Then we'll toss in some. Uh... Lime juice! Not too sour, not too sweet. A tropical vibe, courtesy of some... Lavender extracts? Maybe you're thinking of a vampire? Uh, the refreshing sweetness of... Vanilla ice 
cream. So that's the brain? Uh, now you're just being weird. And for a blood red tent, a splash of... <laughs> I'm laughing at literal blood. Uh... It's funny, this is funny to watch. I'm glad you're getting entertainment out of it, because I literally know nothing about alcohol. Uh, I know that this is a, a thing that goes in alcoholic drinks. I don't know if it's alcoholic. I know it goes in the drinks. I'm gonna go with the cherry cups here. Because we've already, we already clearly fucked this up. So, screw it. You toss in the final ingredient, plus a few chops to some other random balls for no reason. Beyond the fact that they look cool and mix it all up in a shaker just like in that movie you never saw. Because we can't mix another single intellectual property that we don't have a proper license for. I must say, it's not good. It's certainly not a real drink. If you're not just a bad mixologist, you're a bad liar too. I think Dwight and Claudette sabotaged me. Now can I get just get some ginger ale? Don't take it too personally. I plan on drinking the rest of you two leave. You do that, narrator. Before you get a chance to try your own creation, the sound of thunder from an approaching storm echoes from over the ocean. Lightning strikes a palm tree on the beach, and it immediately starts fire. The activity ends abruptly, as Claudette and Dwight usher the two of you away from the bar. That's not good. I've also changed what my strategy is going to be for these next couple runs, because, um... I've realized I might want to actually try and learn what they might do for the ending things. I don't, oh well. Nah, screw it. We're still gonna keep try and go back to Wraith, even though we picked the wrong person for that thing. Oh well! Oh, I guess it's in the mor- Maybe there isn't always a, a removing person thing. I don't know. Cause it, cause we didn't have the part where they made us spin the wheel to pick who our first date was gonna be either, so. Maybe it's a little bit different. Me just watching you be bad at making an alcoholic drink. I mean, listen, I, uh, yeah, I would be bad at it. I do not recommend the eternal damnation of perpetual narrator, dumb. Good thing you've really used your time well since then. Really getting to know the gang, the brain, the mogul, the best case, the psychotic bunny girl. You know the four types of people. Anyway, everyone is gathered on the volleyball course for a new type of game. Oh, here's where we get the elimination part. All right, so we're gonna pitch a dream. They're gonna pitch dream dates to me. Last time only one of them pitched a date, which is weird. All right, Spirit's gonna give us our dream date first. Figuratively. Damn it. Oh no, that's Claudette. Damn it, Toy, you gotta watch your words with these people. Tomorrow, you'll spit in the face of God, die, and be reborn anew. Uh, th that's it? If you're not intrigued by that, I don't want you. Go draw a crayon art with Trapper. Take whatever mysteries with the Wraith. I don't know what those guys do all day. Uh, do you want to at least specify which god to be spitting in the face of? All of them. Oh, okay, okay then, so hydrate tonight if you intend to hang with spirit. Uh, great. Huntress, why don't you take it from here? Tomorrow morning, I'm playing a nice atmospheric breakfast on the yacht. Don't worry, Trapper won't even know it's gone. What was that? Nothing. Go away. Then. Then. Mm. Boy, oh boy, I've got such an adventure plan. Involves hunting for treasure. Um, what kind of treasure are we looking for? I guess just to pick me to find out. Let me tell ya, it's primo stuff. Now, if you don't mind, I've got to start preparing. Because it's clear already that you're gonna pick me. Confident. Mysterious. I like it. Trapper, without further ado, would you like to make us all uncomfortable by pushing the boundaries of what's acceptable, not only in a plus society, but within the narrative of this in-world event, and also the larger meta-narrative of a dead-by-daylight dating experience? Sometimes you just gotta say it. Why, yes, thank you, I'd love to. So, Santa, you thinking of picking me? Well, this is your final warning. Pick me and be punished. And rewarded. Tomorrow will suck. Probably. I'm not an easy guy to get along with. I know that. But I can tell you this much. I'm out in a secret on this side that'll make fans shit themselves with excitement. If you like Trapper, you're gonna love it. 
And if you're not a maggot, also, everyone, even confident sexy ladies from Rebel Mess, better stay the hell off my yacht! Okay, uh, anyway, um, Wraith? Well, um, uh, I don't know. I'd really just prefer to tell Xanatok privately. I don't really know how that's going to work with these game mechanics. What if you just whispered it to Xanatok? Wraith considers this for a long moment. Too long. That's fine. Without moving, Wraith lowers his voice to a barely audible whisper. Tomorrow, we have to find my bell. And then I can finally tell you about what I've been working on. It's going to be really special. The kind of thing where we will really bond. And maybe finally get off this island. And maybe then, we can go on a real date. Uh, you done? Is that it? Rick nods. Proud. And time's up, everyone! Gosh, you only need to dream about these options so you're ready to choose in the morning. Now go dream about all these swoon-worthy options so you're ready to make a choice come dawn. Have a swell night! Uh, did you forget to mention something? Oh, 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 oh gosh, how can we forget? Uh, before you run out of slumber peacefully, there's one more thing to do. No reality dating show competition would be complete without kicking somebody off the island! Alright, so last time around, we eliminated the trapper and we got an achievement for eliminating the trapper. So that means there's an, an achievement for everyone. So this time, oh, you want to know how much the reaction is being picked? Okay! I'm gonna pick to eliminate the huntress. I have to get rid of anyone. There's my achievement, good my huntress. You've shared the huntress's whole I didn't get to see the rest of that achievement. Thanks, team. Oh, but thank god I figured out how to throw the uh, the notification pop-up sound effects because that was very annoying last time. Dear God, was it stupid. Uh, you've shaken the huntress's whole world with this decision. Your cruelty is shocking. I'm so sorry. I had to get rid of him. I hate to get rid of everyone. It's because you all scared me so much. But also it just doesn't seem fair. But that's not fair, is it? With her strong arms, I could probably hurl me back to the mainland. A face no one has ever seen. A tragic backstory she loves to bring out when there's a break in the conversation. Huntress, I'm describing you. This hurts, but I have to eliminate you. <sighs> Honestly, this is a bit of a release for me. I don't have to keep constantly trying to impress you. It's been exhausting. Tonight, this fancy attire is coming off, and the sweatpants are going on! Tomorrow, I think I'll stand in the ocean and get to stand with my bare hand. Oh yes, I did say, bare hands. Wow, she took that rather well, honestly. A lot better than how Trapper took it. Oh uh, yes, and it's the consolation prize, Huntress will now get a trickster body pillow. Uh, I did check the Dead by Daylight uh, merch store. These are not real. I hate to break it to you, they're not real. There are ever body pillows for three of the killers in this game. I don't remember which ones, but I know one killer doesn't get one. Why, I don't know. Maybe they're sold out and they just took it off the store. But they are Dwight tested and Claudette approved. All right, crazy way to end the day. Elimination, let's see. Uh, the confessionals have changed. She is not happy. Puntress's eyes are filled with anguish. The bunny ears on her mask have drooped. It is as I feared. I am a wild animal. An unlivable beast of the forest. I got another achievement? Obsessed much. I think you might be enjoying this game a little too much. Is that for, like, playtime, I'm guessing? I shall diminish and go into the east and remain. The Huntress. And I thought Spirit was the emo one. I don't remember the last time I felt this nervous, excited, or chemically. No, those two feelings are very similar, but, uh, oh, I don't know. Xantuck is really great. What else do you want me to say? How do I see things are going? Nah, it's a matter of perspective. If Xantuck's supposed to impress me, things are going poorly. We're seeing our schools getting themselves killed? They're doing an amazing job! Did I think there's a chance of it getting eliminated? Yeah, I did. 
that I care if I got eliminated? Not even a little. This is a volume of words that's been talking about how much I don't care about things, signify a deeper yearning within me to be seen, heard, and validated by those around me? Nah. Get out of here, Trickster! You don't get nothing! Get out! Get out of here if you're in that tease! No, Ocean! You don't get the confessionals either! You made the chair wet! Get out! You two also don't get anything. Get out of here. Oh. He said something about the Huntress and I missed it. Uh... What? Oh, yes. They really want to be free from existence. Okay. Everybody's crazy. Alright, and that's another episode down of Hooked on You, a Dead by Daylight dating sim. Uh, we dated. We made some choices. We might have pissed off a killer or two. We might have made the killer or two fall for us. I don't know. There's several episodes of this, and this is only this is just one intro. Anyways, uh, see you on the next one. Bye, everyone.